Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming and joining us this evening. I see a few folks out there. I see you out there, Callie. Hi. Um, my name is Mark Galladay, and I'm happy to say that I'm the executive director of the Artisan of uh, Artisan <laughs> at Cedarhurst. Absolutely. And um, gosh, this is a this is a great community. Uh, many of you already come out and have seen us. You've seen the building coming up. It's growing up out of the ground. It's so so magnificent. Cannot wait for us to open. But here tonight with me, I'm, I'm happy that we have our corporate chef, Christian, here. I'll let Christian tell you a little bit about himself. Hey, everybody. I'm Christian Goulet. I am the corporate executive chef for Cedarhurst uh, and the Artisan. So we are very excited to add this addition to our family. Um, you know, audio, right? we're all about dining. I got to stress that enough to you, yes. to everybody out there. Hard. Dining is Hard very, you. very important Hard. for us. What we're going to talk about today is a beautiful charcuterie board. So we're going to talk yes. about how it's displayed, what all ingredients that we use for it. We'll talk about a little bit of the prep and the production from it, but we'll also talk about the ingredients that we're using. So very exciting stuff. And right now we're going to get started on an important part of this, uh, of this board, of this display. That is the strawberry mm. chutney, Mark. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yes. you're, uh, I, I see I you're, that's you're, what you're it starting is. to heat up already. That's there. right. That's right. Uh, I can't wait to smell those, those great ingredients. Absolutely. And it's so simple. It is so and simple. I things that are easy, the, uh, uh, that show well, right. that have great flavor, and that are just simple to execute. Check this. And that's right, Mark. Uh, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a little bit of onions, right? Just some fresh diced onions. We're going to get them in that skillet. So Christian, also I want to yeah. thank you for um, coming up thank with a uh, recipe for this. Yeah, I I screen, for uh, those of you who were able to get your bags, we have the recipe for this. That this should be a should have, that should have and if you weren't able to get your bags, we, we have them yeah. at the marketing uh, trailer, and we would love for you to come out and pick those up. Oh, I, I see you sweating those onions there. Okay. So oh, good. I have one key thing that Mark was mentioning oh, to you. Yeah. I see you getting your skillet hot, oh, right? Man. So one thing we talk about with chefs is you always start mm -hmm. in a hot skillet. How do we know the skillet is hot, you ask, right? I mean, it looks like it's hot. It's been on the flame for a little bit, but what are the key things? Well, that is what we call smoking point. Oh, when we have those oils in there and we can start seeing the smoke from it, oh, absolutely. Nice. And just what he was saying, we're sweating these onions. We're actually bringing out the sugars, the natural sugars and onions, which sure. you see a little bit of color. Yeah, smell it out. I'm going to wave some of that smell. over towards you so you can smell it. Uh, I don't yeah. love it. I love it. It's got to be a little scratch and sniff on the screen, right? Mark? All right, right. I mean, that's what we have to do. So we've got some beautiful color going on our onions, which is most important. We got that translucent. We got the smell, if you were right. At the highest. Yeah. But the next step for this is very well, important. Can I ask you a question real quick? Please. So you, you, you got your skillet hot. And you're, um, I guess, sweating your onions. But what what kind of oil did you use to put in there? I used a little bit of olive oil. I okay. love using olive oil. And the most important factor, great, great question, Mark, is because olive oil has a high smoking point, right? We talked about the smoke point. We can see that. Nice. Now you add that olive oil. So butter will burn at about, you know, 180 degrees. So you're not even getting a really good hot skillet at that point. So you want to use an oil base, canola, your vegetables, well, oil, 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 or what I like to do, so olive oil. It's a little bit thicker, and it adds a little that. bit of flavor to it. Yeah, add some flavor. Next, we're going to add some fresh ground ginger. Right, simple, easy. Guys, you know, take a little bit of time uh, in those gift yep. baskets you were talking about. We put a peeler in there. Yeah, I'm going to take this down. Great so utilization of that tool. Peel your okay. fresh ginger, grind it on a little cheese grater with it, and I'm get a little bit of fence. So it doesn't now, take much, huh? It doesn't take much at all, right? right? It's very simple. Now, with this being added, with the fresh ginger and the onions, we call this our aromatics. Right. And that that's driven from the, the Latin term aroma. Right. So you're yeah. getting so that good flavor. That, that, that smell over it. It smells Absolutely. wonderful. Absolutely. So we're really drawing out some of that flavor. And that's that's your real good foundation for your chutney. Next, very, very important. I wanted to talk about uh, the strawberries. And I don't know if we can get a cool visual on some of these strawberries here. So the strawberries are great because they're what we call macerated. I know everybody's probably heard that term before used in your kitchens every day. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> macerating every strawberries. morning i have macerated <laughs> strawberry yeah <laughs> so every time every time you you cook with some strawberries you want to draw out all the moisture to it and you do that through sugar right you just toss them in sugar put them in your bowl let them set for a couple of hours and then you'll have this wonderful juice right there coming off of the bowl and we want to add that straight into our skillet and we want to get that juice, right? It's real thick. It's got a nice, nice glaze to it. Almost syrupy. Almost syrupy. That's exactly what it is. So we want to just add our two cups of strawberries. And you guys, you can just do a rough chop on the strawberries. It that's what's going to be my next question is, how fine should I make it or how thick should it be? But yeah, just a rough chop. Huh? Just do a quick rough chop on them, right? Because you're going to sweat them down or you're going to macerate them. You're gonna release all those that moisture from it. So it's quick, easy, painless. And we're gonna let this cook for a little while. I don't know if you guys can see that going right there, uh, but we're gonna let that cook for a little bit and stew, right? We're gonna stew them in those juices. Oh, wow. Yeah, and that's how simple it is, right, Mark? Okay. So we're gonna get that set up. So now what would you, after that's done, Uh huh. what should I pair that with? Or what, what's that gonna be a part of? Absolutely. It? So that is gonna be to our charcuterie board, right? Okay. This wonderful strawberry chutney pairs well with the French bread, with oh. the sausages, with the cheese that you're gonna put with it. It's a nice spread that goes along with it. So we're gonna, uh, yeah, so we're gonna get started on that. All we're right. gonna talk a little bit about building that display and, and bringing it up and all these wonderful ingredients that we have for it. So this is great chef, but I'm a new resident at the Artisan. Brand new. Um, what am I going to, am I, am I going to see this? You uh, absolutely are. And where would I see it? Great, great question. So what we are doing, we host chef demos, monthly chef demos at the Artisan. Yes. And I mean oh. chefs. We've got some of the best chefs in the St. Louis area that are going to be coming in. Our chef at the Artisan alone, he's going to be uh, producing these demos as well, too, as well as myself. Uh, that's a big commitment we make to our residents, right? Okay. They want to see uh, our fresh ingredients. They want to meet local purveyors. They want to see the things that we're doing and that we're we're promoting in our restaurants and our outlets at the community so that they can know what they're eating every day. Can, and, I, be your, can I be your guest chef one of these times? Yes. <laughs> Mark, I told you. I'm going to get that jacket off. All right. Pull up All the right. sleeves. You're going to see Chef Mark out there handling some uh, some good things, some produce, All right. some different things. But one of the chef demos is building charcuterie boards, right? Awesome. We want to show our residents how they can do it for a simple family get together, right? Say you and your, your family's coming over to visit you. Of course, we, we're going to have some big holiday events. Mm -hmm. Of course we are. I'm, I'm so excited about some of these major events. But say we got Thanksgiving kicking off, right? Your family's coming over. They're going to join us for, for dinner too as well. Make a beautiful charcuterie board right near your apartment, right? So they is there a order. better time of year to do this? Oh, yeah. Holidays are fantastic. Get-togethers are a great way to do it. Um, you know, looking at even during the summertime, right? Okay. You can come up with really quick, fun ideas to build out and to, to do these simple displays with. So in other words, you're telling me I can use different seasonal items. You can, absolutely. And that's when we get into the ingredients, Mark. Nice All right. Way. This guy is a professional, I think. Oh. That's what we're going to talk about is some of these amazing ingredients. And today we pick fall, right? We're going to do a Thanksgiving theme. So with it, I've got some absolutely gorgeous meats. So we buy from Salumi Badu, which is a local St. Louis artisan cured meats. Fantastic company. We've been working with them for quite a while. And so they'll do some numerous different sausages. Uh, of course, our salami, prosciutto, uh, sorpresata, a lot of different great cured meats that we're going to look at. Well, even the name of that place sounds delicious. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and they do a great job. Yes, they do a lot of promotion. Uh -huh. And then we've got our cheeses, right? We've got some wonderful pepper jack, but also I like to highlight that with a little bit more formal cheeses, you know, the goat cheeses, mm -hmm. doing like a peppercorn crusted, doing a oh. blueberry We've got a gorgonzola in here today, and we've got a manchango, a nice Spanish cheese with a little bit of spice. Wow. And of course, the ever loving smoked gouda that we're going to talk My about. My favorite, personally. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and our borson cheese, soft, creamy, herb garlic, a lot of good flavor. So what, I, what I see here, Chef, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut no, you off no, no, there, no, please. is that I see you have some hard cheeses. I see you have some that are soft and even some that are creamy. So 
there, there's a lot of diversity that you're putting into the security board. One hundred percent. Yeah. And not only just diversity in taste, but also in just what you were mentioning and texture. Yes. Right. So, you know, you can come up, you can put your nice rustic breads on. And I always like to start with my cheeses. Right. I like to showcase those because they're important. It's important for everybody to see all the variations of cheeses that you have. You don't want to overburden them. You don't want to cover them up too much with it, but you also want to add a little bit of flavor. So another important part, and I don't know if everybody can see the tiers that we're doing here. Should we pull it, up, pull it forward a little yeah, bit? Yeah, but what I like to do is I like to really showcase levels, right? Height okay. with it. Okay. One is you save space. And if everybody sees this table, we've got a lot of our mise en place, which is all of our ingredients. And then we've got a very small space for our display, but we're gonna add quite a bit of items to it. So if you build height, if you build it up, you mm -hmm. can display more. You can put more ingredients and add more time with it than just a flat board. And you know, I, I think uh, if I can speak for the audience here, I know when I've tried to do this before, just building that board is, is, a, is uh, it's challenging, but it's also fun at the same time, right? It is, absolutely. It is, uh, and it's something you can do with your family. It's something you can oh. do with people around you, you know, yeah. have them all come over, spend 10 minutes just getting all the prep work done, getting all the items set up for it. And then what you can do is when everybody starts coming over, mm -hmm. start building it or get the kids involved, get, you know, some of the, some of the friends involved in it, you know, sharing a couple of glasses of wine, right? Glass of wine? Did we say, <laughs> couple did anyone say wine? <laughs> Because uh, a charcuterie board always goes well with wine. Is there right? any particular uh, type of wine that you suggest? Absolutely. I like a red wine with it, you know, because you're going to have the cured meats. A mm -hmm. lot of flavor there, right? You're mm -hmm. going to have some great flavorful cheeses. So go with a deep red wine. Go with something a okay. little bit uh, stronger. I would suggest a dry Cabernet or even a blended, you know, okay. to get a little bit of mix on it, a Shiraz, something different, some of your favorite vintages. And that leads me, I'm waiting till you lead me into the next phase, right? Talking oh, yeah. about our wine. Oh, yeah. So at the Artisan, I've heard, this could be rumor, so you can uh, <laughs> confirm this or, or, or not. Is there going to be a wine bar? Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely wine bar. Bar. We are so excited to talk about the Veranda Wine Bar. And a Veranda meaning a nice big patio overlooking beautiful Chesterfield. But our wine bar is amazing. It is so a, on a beautiful night like tonight. Beautiful night like tonight. They could go out and sit and, on the and, veranda. Yes. And sip wine, have their little charcuterie board. Absolutely. And great company and, and, and great fun with their friends. Absolutely. Their great company, great friends. You couldn't have said it any better. And that's what that's what really kind of pushes it together for us. And mm -hmm. all the events that we'll be hosting yeah. in the wine bar. One of the, uh, the the big things that I'm very excited about, and I know Mark is, is our wine club. You yes. know, getting our residents involved. Join, uh, join now. <laughs> <laughs> having a, what we call a VIP status in our community, because those that are part of the VIP or um, the wine bar, now I'm calling them VIPs, a <laughs> part of our wine club, mm -hmm. get first oh, dip on all the events that are going on. Oh, so they, they get uh, wines. They'll get the first dibs on all the great wines coming out, all the specials that we'll be running for it. Uh, they'll be, will there be tastings? Absolutely. We'll uh, be doing wine tastings, dinners, uh, you know, monthly, quarterly, going out, traveling with it. Um, so we've got a lot of exciting things going on that uh, with the wine club. That's going to be huge. And if you're a wine person or hey, if you just want to learn about wines, it's a great opportunity to get involved and to join something so great. Sounds like a wonderful lifestyle. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's that's what we have at the Artisan. You know, we're focusing tonight on, on our food and beverage program, and uh, but it doesn't stop there when we, were dis when we were discussing the Artisan. We have that with all our activities and all the different venues that we have within the community. So I'm super excited about we have to, what we have to offer for you all. And uh, wow. And I can tell you right now, I can still smell those uh, <laughs> the strawberries, strawberries coming in. So oh, uh, how's it looking over there, Chef? It looks great. I don't know if everybody has an opportunity to see this wonderful, where we've even started at. We're building a beautiful foundation 
on our charcuterie board right now. And what we have is, and just kind of quick little glimpse of it, we've got our cheeses, our foundation laid for it. Uh, really sprightly, a lot of color, a lot of textures, yes. you know, which is important for us uh, to display these with. You know, it adds just a little bit of a uh, nostalgic. Uh, one thing that I love doing and love hearing when we do charcuterie boards and displays is, is everybody coming around asking about it like oh what is this a blueberry goat cheese this is amazing or tell me a little bit more about the manchanga you know or the gorgonzola you know what's the flavor profile on those and to be able to talk a little bit more about it gets people it's, involved gets yeah. them uh very curious and it's very rustic and, and it, when i think about this rustic feel it kind of makes me think about the crafted menus that we have uh, so tell me a little bit about the craft <laughs> menus, yeah. very exciting very exciting so yes uh we are all about our dining program again i stated that and we mean that so what's important about us and mark is mentioning our crafted uh program is because we craft menus designed for our residents okay well, our, our dining rooms are open 7 a.m 7 p.m Right? You don't see that everywhere. You don't. And that's the lifestyle that we are residents want, you know. But, you know, it the artisan is there will be their home. That will. And in our homes, there's no a clothes sign on our on our kitchens, right? Or, Absolutely. Or so that's the way it is with the artisan, from what I'm hearing you say. That is, that's 100 percent the way with the artisan. Uh, you know, we want you to be out, enjoy yourself, go shopping with your, your daughters or you know, golfing with your friends. You come back at two o'clock in the afternoon, you want to get that beautiful burger with that uh, aborsin cheese or whatever special we're running that day. That's the options for you. That's where it's at. We have those options for you. So, and that's okay. a great way to look Love at that. it. The next we're going to go into is our meats, right? Our cured meats. We've talked a lot about that. Mm -hmm. We talked a lot about the salumi padu, some of my <laughs> personal favorites on these, uh, but we're going to display these out. Again, We've got our foundation laid. Now we're going to add to that with our meats. It's this simple, guys. It's just, you know, we're kind of piecing it all together and bringing it off. First, we've got is our uh, prosciutto. You know, we're just going to do just a couple of layers in between uh, a couple of the items. You don't need to go, uh, you know, big on it. You don't need to, you know, throw it around everywhere. Just a few nice slices here and there. Because okay. you can always remember, you know, especially if you don't know how many guests are coming over that you can always add to it. You don't really want to take it away and, and show things sitting out for too long. So that's kind of a philosophy I live by. You don't ever want to take away, but you can always add to it. And do you look to kind of mix colors or? or we do. Um, you know, flavors, how, how do you? Nothing nothing too extreme with that. That's a okay. great question. Um, nothing too extreme with that. I like to look at space, you know, okay. making sure that they have plenty of it, making sure that they can get to it very easily, yes. um, you know, because all of it's, uh, you know, tends around itself, you know, it's all going to have, you know, a meat flavor to it. So it's okay. just depending on what they like more, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, you know, not saturating it all on top of each other. Uh, but yeah, we just kind of add, this is some simple salami right here, just to kind of get it on the board, stack it around. And one of the things that we were talking about earlier is all the things that you can add to your charcuterie board, right? Yes. yes. One of the cool things I saw uh, uh, the other day, one of our chefs doing was sweet items in with their charcuterie. Oh, okay. So yeah. So they would have sweet like, and salty. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, oh, that's such a great idea. That's such a fun idea, especially, you know, with the kids around or with younger kids around, you know, maybe they don't like all the, the good meats and the uh, distinct cheeses. But they love, uh, you know, a little Rice Krispie, chocolate dip Rice Krispie treat in there or something different. That's great. You know what, what the beautiful thing about this, too, as you say, it's, as they have their loved ones come up, maybe it's the grandkids or great grandkids coming to visit. So having a charcuterie board that has some sweet and salty really plays to that, that younger taste bud, too. Absolutely. I, I, I definitely see uh, maybe it's some uh, chocolate covered uh, pretzels or something on the side or something. Yeah, yes. And a cool thing I like to do, I don't know, again, if you guys can get the shot of all this, but I like to, you know, maybe have the whole chunk of meat and just cut off of it or the cheese, a whole chunk of it, cut some off of it, but have it displayed out like it's still a part of it, like it's still together. It's just a neat little way to 
to put it out there and to add a little depth to the board. I love that. And especially this time of year, it makes me think about like a cornucopia with things just kind of flowing there out. You so, so you have a cornucopia of meat, of sausages. Yeah. <laughs> that is such a great way to look at it. Yeah, you know, and, and it's just all together. It's all coming through and, and being a part of it. But yeah, definitely, definitely. Very nice. I mean, it's I love the colors that you have going on, Chef, there. Yeah. Um, and it's just really, truly, you are building this, <laughs> like you're building your own little uh, house here. Yeah, apparently. like a, a little gingerbread house. There you go. <laughs> it's just a nice, fun way to keep it going with it. But yeah, um, so yeah. Maybe... Can you tell me a little bit about, um, as we were talking about building all this, we, we talked about a little bit about our, our wine bar. Mm -hmm. um, we talked a little bit about the uh, the bistro. But what about the, the dining and uh, the dining program. Absolutely, yeah. Like you mentioned before, uh, it's all about crafting it for our residents, right? Mm -hmm. So we know time is a big, big specification for yeah. them. Residents, you know, we don't want to, like you said, we're open all day in our homes. Why wouldn't we be open uh, in our dining room? Yeah, but the other part of it is choices, right? I mean, we don't want to send ourselves and to say, hey, you know, you're only getting this option tonight. You know, we're only doing this option. So having a full menu. And when I say true restaurant style, I mean that. I mean that that's the focus of it. Not two choices, not three choices, but you have a whole menu. Okay. Choose what you want to eat, when you want to eat. And now with Miranda Wine Bar and our bistro, where you want to eat, yeah. right? Uh, that's important for us in our dining program, and that's how we build out for it. Right. So we. So what you, what I'm hearing you say, Chef, is there at the Artisan, there's going to be at least three different venues. Yes. You can have food or drink it. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have our wonderful bistro concept, which is going to be more of a quick service. Okay. Uh, come in. I mean, I vision it breakfast, uh, maybe quick lunch options, but during breakfast, morning cup of coffee, fresh baked pastries. Uh, you know, we'll offer omelets, we'll offer, uh, you know, some quick, easy egg options, breakfast sandwiches, just a variety of things. If you're into a big breakfast, that's the perfect spot to go. If you're into something quick and easy, I got to get on the road, something healthy, right? And that's right. another thing we don't talk a lot about, right. but our healthy choices is important for us because we know it's important for our residents. Well, and you bring up a very good point, uh, Chef, too. Uh, at the Artisan, we, we will have a very active community. Well, we're going out, we're doing things in the community. There's exercise classes that will be going on. We have the Y that's right down the street from us. So we will very, we will be very immersed into the community, but also we'll bring some of those programs into uh, into the artisan. So you don't have to even leave your home. So really excited about that. That's I'm I'm a I'm a I'm an exercise guy. I like to get out there. So you may even see me in some of those classes. Yeah. That is so, perfect. And I'm sure the residents would love to see you in those classes oh, and involved with them. It wouldn't be the first time that I've done that. <laughs> no, that <laughs> is perfect. That is great. Yeah. yeah. But again, I, I love I love what you're saying. Yeah. So, you know, we're looking at it from a holistic uh, perspective, you know, active uh, events that are, that are going on throughout the uh, community uh, paired with uh, healthy foods is going to pair is going to really help help us to have uh, really healthy uh, residents. So absolutely, uh, very, very excited about that. It is. I and see that, you have some vegetables going That's on. really, you know, man, Mark is just, he's he's good. He's leading us right into one thing after another. One segue it, into the next. Yeah, I love it. It's <laughs> like we planned this. I, I, don't know. I think we need to go take this show on the road. I what do too. Think? What is what does the audience think? Should we take this show on the road? The uh, MC show. There you so go. Uh, <laughs> but so, yeah, that's exactly what we're going to add to our charcuterie board next. I love grilled vegetables, Mark. Yes. I think it adds a whole different variation to eating your vegetables, mm -hmm. right? And when we talk about kids earlier, this is a great way to introduce those things to them, uh, but to grill them, right? And I mean, it's it's fun to saute, it's fun to steam, but whenever you grill them, you add a whole nother entity of flavor to it. And so what we're doing here is I've got some beautifully grilled acorn squash Ooh, wow. and some beautifully grilled butternut squash. Perfect for this time of year. Perfect for this time of year. This is will make it and tie it into your Thanksgiving festivities. But a great thing about them is uh, all it is is just a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of honey, and a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay. That's it. Simple. Marinate it, grill them, and then cool them down, and you can add them straight to your charcuterie board. And Very again, good. just like anything else, we're just going to find a little space for them. 
we're going to add that little bit of color right there, right? We're just going to tear them off of it, have a nice little uh, framework for it. And so whenever I cut mine, I like to leave them whole so that you can do a nice little display whenever you're putting them out. So there's a whole new dimension to that. It does. And, right? and I love that charred look on some of the vegetables. Absolutely. Just really adds to the color. It does. It does. As well as the flavor. As well as the flavor. That's a big part of it. Big yeah. component for it. That's fantastic. Um, yeah. Sorry, right? Thank you. And then our, our, of course, our butternut squash. And, and nice, Yum. like you said, great color. Uh, adds a little bit of depth to it. Good flavor. And again, guys, so you don't have to overcrowd. You can space it out. That's what we wanted to do. And you guys see, it's a very small space that it would take up. Mm -hmm. But whenever you tear it and you go high, now you've got a little bit of level with it. And plus, it's just, it's prettier that way, in my point of view, than a flat board. And, you know, you get a little bit of depth to it. So mm -hmm. it's really, really nice. You know, the presentation is top notch. Um, again, this is, is is high living high on the hog here. Uh, yes, and and that's, that's definitely what we want to illustrate with uh, with our artists. That's it. I mean, that's it. It is upscale. very very upscale. I know our residents are looking for that. They're yes. looking for great presentation, great yes. quality, right? right? Great execution. We know that's important for us, and that's important for all of our residents. Right. So I'm going to be adding on some red onions, right? Just some really great color. Just to add a little bit of red onions. This is great to go on that crusty bread with a little oh, bit of yeah. cheese. Yeah, and a little bit of a salami right there. Is the Chef, you're making of... me hungry. Uh, I know. We're... I think everybody's here ready to eat. So we, we uh... may have to go to commercial break so I can get a <laughs> snack. I mean, <laughs> that would be uh, that would be probably happy. You guys, we would come back and there'd be nothing on here. So sorry, we would just be uh, doing the giveaway and <laughs> finishing up. But a lot of great color, as you guys can see, mm -hmm. and we're not overcrowding it. You know, no. we've got it pretty good spaced out, and we're gonna we're gonna do our little uh, garnet at the end, like I like to call it, just a little bit of garnish for it. All but right. yeah, take that out of way for a shot. You thank you, and then our trio bell peppers and grilled asparagus. Very Again, nice. nice way to add color, pepper mm -hmm. sweetness, right? We talk a lot about that, adding those different flavor profiles to it and just some color. I mean, just really brings it out. And you can overlap the vegetables, you know, put okay. them together. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we do the great display is overlapping other fruits, really adding some color and highlighting it. So again, I, I like to just shift, shift back over to the, uh, to the artisan in, in, in the dining. Yes. Um, you know, this looks great. Uh, there, as we know, in the Chesterfield area, there's a lot of great restaurants. In the St. Louis market, there's a lot of great restaurants. Um, how do you how do you see the artisan uh, dining program stacking up to that? From presentation to to taste to just variety of of items on the menu on the crafted menu. Great question, Mark. That is a phenomenal question, and I appreciate you asking that. Number one is we know our residents. Mm -hmm. Number one, so important. We say crafted, we mean crafted. We craft to what our residents like. How many restaurants can do that? Now, there are a few that have, you know, great uh, uh, base of, of customers that come in that they know, they get to know. Uh, but we actually do know. We, we spend time on this. We work with our chefs on developing programs around that from our, what, town hall meetings, resident food councils. You make the decision. The residents make the decision and talk about what they like to eat, what they would like to see more of, right. uh, you know, recipe utilization. We've got some great programs in our communities right now that residents actually put in their recipes for what they've grown up eating, right? right? And then the chefs will implement those and do tastings for it and really showcase to the residents what they can and can't do. And create your own plate. <laughs> create your own plate. That's so right. What about, uh, I mean, again, being a Missouri kid growing up here, I know we have uh, rich farmland. We have uh, 
you know, uh, in everything from meats to vegetables that are, are grown here locally. Do you see uh, artisan utilizing any of that? Absolutely. Absolutely, Mark. One of the great things in talking about our monthly chef demos and mm -hmm. what our events are about, we have one farm to fork that we're very yeah. excited to get off ground with it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's bringing in those local farmers. Like you said, we have local, uh, you know, meat cures. We have local uh, uh, butcher shops. We have local uh, farms and produce. Uh, bringing in and educating not only our team, but our residents yep. about, hey, who are we buying from? Tell us more about this and how we can partner with them more and how we can, you know, just develop menus around seasonality. We're very focused on seasonal uh, menus and how do we develop those. Yeah. So that's a great way for all of us to learn and to have those those type of events. Those events are great, not only for just, you know, some socializations some entertainment, absolutely some wine drinking. <laughs> but they're also great for some great <laughs> conversations and learning and learning about those things. I, I love that uh, farm to fork uh, concept and uh, just really just, you know, getting that natural Missouri grown vegetables in. There's Absolutely. nothing like it. So, and even, I mean, I, I, we can even dip over to Illinois and pick a few of them too. <laughs> yes. I actually knew a farm over there. It was called Pie Farm. Okay. Uh, and he called it Pie Farm because he grew everything on his farm for pizzas, right? Oh. And so he would have cows for milk and dairy to okay. produce cheese. He would have tomatoes being grown on there. He would have, you know, meats, uh, beef and cattle being grown out there. And he would come in and he would talk to our residents a lot about how that works, share pictures, share mm -hmm. stories with it. Uh, and what we're buying, right? We want right. to talk about that. What are we serving our residents from it? Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to add a little bit of grilled asparagus. And again, sure. guys, you can overlap those beautiful vegetables. Look at that. Look at how that pops out. Really showcases that, hey, this is a healthier version mm -hmm. uh, or you have healthy options on here. But you have many, many options, many different things to showcase, and especially these wonderful grilled vegetables. Christian? Okay. Chris, Christian? From the audience. Well, Okay. Yeah. Can, can you hear me? You do when you grill your vegetables. Uh, that was going to be my next question. Oh. With your asparagus. All right. I got, got a chef out there. there. I got a chef out there. Yeah. Absolutely, guys. One of the important things for doing it is just like what we talked about with a skillet. You want a hot grill, right? Because your vegetables are going to cook quick. And especially if you can see, these are more pencil asparagus. They're really thin with it. So to get that nice char flavor, but to not overcook them, mm -hmm. you want a nice hot grill, right? You want to go straight onto it. You want to hear that sear. We see that in commercials and different things, but that's an actual true bit. You want to see that sear. Uh, so hot grill, uh, put a little bit of olive oil on it. You know, a lot of people will, will spray their grill or, you know, butter it or something. All you're doing is just charring anything on that grill head. So you want to, you know, marinate your vegetables, put a little bit of olive oil, mm -hmm. salt and pepper. Again, we talked about just like with macerating, you, salt does the same thing. It draws out that moisture in vegetables so they don't sit and overcook. So that's a great way to do it too. Good tips. Great, great uh, question. I love like that. that. Love that. Get some more gloves on here. Then we're going to yeah, look at the colors. I know, there. right? I mean, you can almost almost just finish off of that. But wait, we have more. Okay, <laughs> we want to right. showcase more from it. Uh, and we're still cooking our strawberries down, nice and stewed, yeah. looking so soft and so easily uh, easily mashed with it. I mean, you can almost just do it with a spatula here, right? I see that? You're just kind of mashing them down. And that's where the, the chutney concept, right? Chunky, nice, uh, chunky sauce. And that's where that chutney comes from. Great. So you can just kind of break them down. Or you can have this uh, nice, big, beautiful burr mixer, blender. Uh, you could put them in different things. I would never recommend blending that in like a Vitamix or any type of uh, a commercial blender or residential blender. Because you're just going to puree it down. You're going to add all that moisture back in. It's going to be more saucy. Yeah, you want to do a it nice, thick chunky. and chunky. Yeah. yeah. And that's what chunkiness. you want. You lose the chunkiness. There you go. <laughs> so next, we're going to add our grapes, right? Oh, so right. I've got some different grapes here. I got a dark red. I got a red. I got a white grape here. Just some fun, different things. You guys hey, can hey, do Chef, um, I have some grapes, too. 
<laughs> He's enjoying the grapes. There you go. Great way to enjoy them. So now we're we're almost at the point of garnishing our charcuterie board. If you look, right, we've got this beautiful setup. We've got our vegetables on there. We've got our cheeses. We've got the wonderful just display. A lot of color, a lot of atmosphere yes. to it. Now we're going to add a little bit more depth to it, right? Okay. We're almost at the point of garnishing, but I'm going to take a little bit of grapes. I'm going to put them in there. Now, the grapes work as two things. Not only are they beautiful, they go in wine, so they're amazing, yes. but also they add some great flavor to that. I don't know if anybody has ever seen the movie Ratatouille. Have you ever seen that? I've seen part of it. I need to finish it. So every time somebody sees that movie and they tell me whenever the mouse eats the cheese, grape, and bread at the same time and has an epiphany of culinary <laughs> excellence and realizes why food is so good and there is a difference than when you just mesh and throw things together, that's a really good part. Grapes add a lot of that. Grapes have a nice, simple, sweet flavor. They're not over tart. They're not overbearing to these different things. So they're a great way to add in a little bit more flavor. So I love just throwing them on here and you can layer them down, right? Yeah. yeah do like a little display with them. Come down on it. So um, it's not just for the, you know, the presentation of color. You, you, you're looking at the flavor that it brings. Yes, and that's why you absolutely. have multiple different types of grapes. Multiple different types of grapes. Yep. Add that flavor. Add that beautiful color. There's all sorts of great things to be adding to it. Mm -hmm. Again, a great way to entertain if you're having uh, guests come over to, to, to visit you at the Artisan, uh, have them at your apartment or one of the common areas and have a nice charcuterie board. Uh, it's a great way to basically have almost like an appetizer, if you will. It is. Yeah. Right in your room. You could go tell them that, you know, I learned this from Chef Christian or Chef Jason or, you know, I've I've seen this and this is a great way to do it. And uh, yeah, that's the highlight. That's what we love to do. We love to share this information uh, because it makes you look good. Right. You know, you, like you know, what would be fun is it, I know you talked about some of the demos uh, that will be going on, but you know, kind of how um, that concept of, of sip and, and paint, we need to have a sip and charcuterie board for our, for our <laughs> artisan members to do so they're doing it live. That's a great idea. What do you guys think about that out there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that is a great idea with it. So we're getting there, guys. I don't know if uh, everybody's able to see kind of where we're at with it, adding those grapes. Nice little layers coming down, little fun. Uh, what did you call that? Like a cornucopia? Yeah, yeah cornucopia of little, little rainfall coming through there. But yeah. now it's starting to heighten. It looks beautiful. It's got nice color to it. And again, we're ready. We're 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 gonna garnish now. Okay. So I've got some beautiful radishes, right? What? Now radishes are fantastic for these. They're great to just take one, bite it, eat it. They're very refreshing, they cleanse the palate. So Crunchy. they're always a great thing. Crunchy, Crunchy. texture, that right? Got to have that that texture. So we're gonna add a little bit of radishes around. We're gonna put them. We're gonna put them over by our vegetables. You know, just to kind of highlight the color there, kind of the crispiness. You got a nice little al dente bite with your with your peppers and your asparagus, and you got the nice crispy crunchy uh, with your radishes. And now you know, you guys, we're in the fall season. It's great to look at radishes. They're harvested right now. You got some watermelon uh, radishes. You got the different varietals of them. Uh, but they are excellent to use. Throw them in your salads. Throw them in different things for it. But just a great way to showcase on those. Give it a great pop. There. Color. We have another question from sure. the audience. Yes. Will the charcuterie board be available to order from the artisan menu? Wow. A great yes. question. Absolutely. <laughs> Love that answer. Love that yeah, answer. I don't think we even shared that from the very beginning, Mark. We're just so excited to meet you guys and to be on this and to really highlight all these great programs. But one of the reasons why we picked the charcuterie board is because that will be highlighted in our Veranda Wine Bar uh, off the menu for it to share with friends. Uh, to share with spouses, to share, to eat by yourself if you want. I know I could. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> in one of those boards myself. I haven't yes. had so. <laughs> so it is a great way to go up to the wine bar, to, to relax after a, a busy day. Of course, you guys are just extremely busy. We know. 
uh, and to unwind, have a glass of wine, enjoy some of our beautiful cheeses. And some of the highlights from that is our Salumi Vadu cured meats that you'll be able to try off of them. And we're also going to be bringing in Beige Farms Cheeses, which is another local cheese company uh, that we're going to be partnering with on our farm to fork uh, events, but also for our artisan uh, cheese boards and our artisan charcuterie. So what do we have here, Chef? So, yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about this. This is what you call a golden berry. Yeah, this is a uh, something unique. Uh, it's not year round or anything, but uh, it's very tart. Somebody ate it and told me it tasted like a uh, sour cherry. Oh. So it's just, again, another fun little flavor profile that we're adding there that while somebody's picking at it, eating some of those beautiful cheeses, they can come up. I love leaving them on their stems. You just eat them straight off of there. It's, oh, not, great. Very, it's not only pretty, uh, but they also got a lot of great flavor. A lot of great flavor. It'll make you pucker a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you're eating more or drinking more of a dry red. This would go pair perfect with it, right? So you're telling me this would go well with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Picking absolutely. Up, picking up what you're putting down, Chef. There you go. Yeah. And it's just a little fun uh, treat that's on your charcuterie board. Remember, this is just our garnish, right? Our garnet. All right. These are just items that we are adding to at the very end to finish it up. Another question? Yeah, where can we find those if we want to add those in our charcuterie boards at home? Found these at Deerberg's today. Yes. So go. they're they're very quick in and out, but they're there. You can uh you can go there today. I saw them, so I was like, perfect. I mean, this just brings a fall board together right here. This is a great way to show it. So again, it's one of those things with security boards. There really isn't a wrong way of doing it. Never. You is you're yeah. only limited by your imagination, and you can add different combinations of fruits, vegetables, crackers, breads, cheeses. Absolutely. Yeah, and then you know we've got to have the strawberries. Oh, of course. One of the key things I always do: leave your berries whole. There's no point in cutting them up or anything like that. I mean, when they eat the berries off, they eat them off. But if it looks great. It's a lot easier to handle. It displays well on there. Plus, people love to get a nice, big, thick, juicy strawberry. Nothing so, like it. Yeah, leave it on there. Show them up. One of the things I like doing, too, hiding them in the grapes, right? So they even look like they're coming down the grapevine themselves. I love that. So like a little bit of display. Like you got some strawberries growing out of those grapes, huh? That's <laughs> another great way to add a unique twist to your charcuterie board. Absolutely. Great way to add colors. Yes. Yeah. Really highlight and pop the, that strawberry right in there. And again, guys, you don't have to use every single one of your ingredients. You know, maybe you got a lot prepped up. Maybe you got a lot set up that you can just go back to and do as well. All right. And then so at this end, guys, this is it. This is as simple as it is. Now, I know we've been talking for a while and just kind of shooting around with it. But just adding your little bit of garnish on your berries, your fresh berries. But before I do that, I want to I want to claim my cheese. I want to get my, okay. my butter knives or you can use a cheese knife. You can use anything. Uh, I think we gave away a cheese knife from the gift bags, didn't we? Some yes. beautiful cheese knives that came through. Because uh, I always like to look at your knives. I mean, they got beautiful presentation on them. Uh, put out your nice silver for them. Let them showcase. And you got these beautiful knives set up on here, just kind of coming down, layering out all your cheeses in there. Just kind of let that lay. And there you go. And then uh, we're gonna we're gonna add our berries in. Just kind of walk through with it, just a little bit of color. Yeah. All right, and that just kind of highlights them from there. Very nice variety, chef. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so. Still nice and new. Now, you know, when people start getting into it, of course, they're going to tear it up. So it's not going to look beautiful the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> but at least at least you got the presentation coming in whenever they are. Right. It's that first impression, right? Absolutely. Right. That's all we can say. The first impression makes a huge difference. Huge difference. And especially with food. That's mm -hmm. why it is so important for us at the Artisan. Absolutely. You we know. eat with our eyes first. We do. We absolutely do. Good. And we're going to tweak our last little bit. We're right. going to smash up our chutney right there. We're going to get that on the board. 
Okay. And then we're going to be ready to display. We're going to cut us some French bread. And talk a little bit about that. That chutney is looking really yes. good. Yes. Yes. I don't know if we can get a nice little visual there. I know everybody was probably a little surprised at the beginning to see onions and like a nice little sweet chutney, mm -hmm. but it does. It adds that little bit of savory sweet we were talking about, right? Adding in some really nice desserts or different things into your security board, but also with your cooking. You what know, kind you, of onions did you use with that, Chef? I just used a, a, a white onions, just a okay. very simple white onions. I like to use those and grill reds. Okay. Uh, so because your white onions are going to be your sweeter, they hold more sugar. Okay. Uh, so they got a little bit more of that, that effervescent, just sweet taste to it. Uh, and we're going to ladle that chutney right in there. Wow. Yeah. That looks like a, a mouthful of heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a mouthful of heaven just right there. Just beautiful, beautiful. I really think we need a commercial break. I know. <laughs> no. we, we have a few questions. Love okay. them. One you I think already answered. What type of onions did you use? You mm. said sweet, correct? Yeah, just white onion. Mm -hmm. Simple um, white onion. Awesome. And the second was, can we or can the residents invite friends into the artisan to the wine bar, um, and things like that? Absolutely. We want them. Yeah, we encourage it. We absolutely yeah. encourage it. Yes. Um, you know, we want to, you to have your friends out, have your family out. We do it all of our communities. We support that. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a great question. Great question. Great question. We want them to come out. We want them to visit. For them to see, you know, the lifestyle that you're living in. Maybe they'll decide they want to join as well. Even better. Yeah. Even better. Have your friends come out and stay. And then last, we're just going to cut up our... our you know, our bread or just rustic uh, bread. Uh, you can do a French bread. You can do brioche. One thing that I like to do is just, you know, pick up that day old bread at, at Deerberg's or Schnucks, right? Mm -hmm. That's great crusty bread. I'm not a big like, hey, toast the bread, do all that. I like a little bit of a soft center, mm -hmm. a little crispy outside. You don't have to toast your bread every time. You leave it simple, uh, you know, and it's a lot less expensive than all the crackers and the the Ritz and, you know, all these other crackers that go with it that almost overpower all these beautiful ingredients. Right. So if you want something simple. I'm with you, Chef. I, I, I like that, uh, that, that that crunch on the outside, but the softness in the inside. Absolutely. You, you're, you hit the nail on the head. Um, that day old bread is just perfect for chicken little boards. And they practically give them away. So, you know, oh, oh, they're all right. Uh, and then, you know, just kind of put your bread around. You know, I always say that whenever I'm doing big charcuterie boards or things for people, just layer it around, you know, have your bread around. You don't need to do a basket. You don't need to separate it out. Have it all together. Have it flow with it. It's just, it's a great way to keep that whole, you know, cornucopia. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and, and your guests, they're going to be picking it. They are. Uh, they're going to pick a little bit of bread, a little bit of cheese, a little bit of meat, kind of like ratatouille, and they're going to bring it all together. <laughs> so, great way, great way to say that. Yep, yep. And there we go, wow. guys. We're going to pull that over, and we're going to yeah, just kind of showcase how pretty that display is, and how simple it was, and how you guys all helped. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. It is yeah. incredible, Chef. It's, I don't know if you could get a, a view from, from over here with it or uh, in there, but it's it's just amazing. It's got a great view to it, uh, great display, makes a lot of sense for it. You know, easy to get to, wonderful bread portions, all yeah. that. Well, you know, Chef, this has been great, yeah. but, uh, but I want to just um, remind the audience that we do have another Artisan Club event that'll be coming up November 9th. It'll be from... Uh, Three to five o'clock. It'll be at uh, Firefly Grill, uh, St. Louis in uh, Chesterfield Valley. So we invite you all to come out to that event. Um, and if there are some of your friends that aren't on on this uh, presentation, tell them to come too. Yeah. All right. Love to see you in person. And if you do come in person, make sure you come up to myself and the sales team to let us know that you are on watching this presentation put on by uh, by Chef Christian here. And for those of you who've been watching, we have a nice basket that we put together here. There's cutting boards. There's some other fun items in there. There's a, a gift card here to uh, 
um, Bishop's Post, which is right um, across the parking lot from the community. Wow. And uh, so I'm excited about that. I hope my name gets uh, uh, gets uh, pulled fun. out. But unfortunately, our winner tonight is not you, Chef oh, Russell, and man. it's not me. Oh. It's Ann. Ann! So Ann, if you're on there, you are our big winner tonight. Big we one. have this at the uh, at our, our marketing uh, trailer. Um, love for you to come on, pick it up. If you can't come on, pick it up. Just let us know, and we'll bring, we'll do a home drop and bring it to you. All right. Thank Absolutely. you for, for, uh, for, for your uh, participation. Thank you all. This was fantastic. And again, how simple, how easy. Uh, you know, go go out this weekend. Do a beautiful uh, charcuterie board. Right? Buy you some stuff for it. Put it together. Think about the layering. I always think about the height, so think about that too as well. But uh, I appreciate everyone. Look forward to our next event. Yes, uh, yes. I know Mark will be out there. I'm going to try, definitely try to get out there to say hi to everybody, talk a little bit more in person about how wonderful and amazing and excited we are about the dining program at the Arden. Right. Well, and I'm, I'm I'm extremely excited about that as I am with everything that we're going to have at the Artisan. Can't wait to have you as a resident. Can't wait for our building to open up and for us to be one big happy family and a wonderful community. Thank you all. You have a great night tonight and it's been a pleasure presenting to you. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.